December 8th, Tim Tebow. Sometimes the best way to stand up for what you believe is to kneel. Tim Tebow is passionate about playing football and baseball. He was the quarterback for the Florida Gators. He led his college team to win two division championships. He went on to win the Heisman Trophy, and then he went on to play professional football with the Denver Broncos, as well as three other NFL teams. But before all that, Tebow was a high school sophomore who loved Jesus. The scent of crisp autumn air mixed with popcorn and tangible excitement. Fans in green and white filled the bleachers. Friday night high school football had begun. With more energy than a boatload of Red Bull, the cheerleaders led the crowd, and the Allen D. Nice high school football team took the field. The display of testosterone, coupled with the deep calls of let's do this, made the crowd yell even louder. They could feel the wind that was headed their way. Then one player put a little distance between himself and his teammates and he knelt. On the field in front of all those people, he knelt. He thanked God for the opportunity and his ability to play. And after the game, Tim knelt and thanked God again, an action that would become known as Tebowing in the NFL. During his sophomore year, Tebow was brutally tackled early in the game. And after he got up, he limped a bit. It's just a bruise, toughen up, the coach said. He didn't want to come out anyway, so I just told him, this is the stuff legends are made of. Just keep on going. As the game wore on, Tim's limp became more and more obvious. He hobbled through the fourth quarter, and even as he ran 29 yards for a touchdown to tie up the score, Tebow's run was painful to watch. By the end of the game, Tebow could hardly stand, but he managed to kneel after the game and thank God for the opportunity and his ability to play. After the game, when they x-rayed his leg, it showed a fracture, a jagged break. The God who Tim Tebow knelt before is the same God who gave Tim enough strength and perseverance to play almost an entire game of football on a broken leg. And he was the same God that gave him the perseverance to go on to play professional baseball after his football career ended. 1 Corinthians 16.33 says, Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. What do you believe in so much that you would stand for, even if others do not? Sometimes the best way to stand up for what you believe is to kneel. Welcome everybody to a new episode of 365 Christian Men. Today is December the 8th. The character today is Tim Tebow, and here speaking is Stefano Guayone from King of Kings, Jerusalem. My faith is not just a little piece of my life, it is my life. This is what Tim Tebow said. And I love this sentence. In fact, today my encouragement for you is to make your faith in Jesus not just a little piece of your life, not part of your life, but your life, your entire life. Faith is not what you believe. It's what you are. Faith is believing in the finished work of the Messiah. Faith is believing in the unseen. Actually, faith sees what others don't see. In Hebrews 11, the so-called Hall of Fame of Faith portrayed a list of men and women who stood against the odds and believed in things which were unseen until that very moment. They saw things that nobody in their generation managed to see. Give you some examples. Noah built an ark in view of an event that nobody in his generation ever saw, which was the flood. Abraham left his own town and family to move to a place he never saw. Sarah conceived at the age of 90, and you don't see that very often. (laughs) With Moses, The people of Israel crossed the Red Sea on dry land, and you don't see this very often either. Let your faith in God and the finished work of the Messiah open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, and start seeing things for you and for your family. Make faith your life and start seeing things in your life with the eyes of faith. Be strong. 